Disney Cruise Line is back. That's good news, but there's a lot you need to know before you go. So that's what we're going to talk about today. This is episode number 42. I'm Soraya. I'm Aurora. And together we're just Just your your average average Disney Disney travelers. Now, before we get to Disney Cruise Line, there's a lot to talk about on that, and that will be the bulk of this episode. But first, I really was wanted to share, we're really excited that Disneyland has announced the program that is going to replace their annual pass holder program. And so we know, like, uh, during COVID, it was announced that that program was going to be discontinued completely. And it would be replaced with some other kind of loyalty program or member program. And the wording that they used had a lot of people concerned that it would be like that, a loyalty program, like a punch card system, which wasn't going to always be the best um, for a lot of the people that used annual pass holders. What's really awesome is that is not the case. It is very much like the annual pass holder program, but it has a new name and it has a few different changes, not major, but minor changes. The new name is, these are the Disney magic keys. And there are four different keys, so four different levels. And we're not gonna go through all of them. I would encourage you to go to disneyland.com to read the details, the fine print, see the blockout dates and all of that. But there are four levels. The lowest level is of course for the Southern California residents. And that's gonna be the best deal. Although that also has the highest blockout dates. Like really basically anytime that kids are out of school, it's blocked out all of the weekends all of this all of the summer all of the holidays all of the breaks and so um but they have that um lower price and then from there it kind of just goes up the low the next one is the oh that was called the imagine key the second level is the enchant key which looks very 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 similar with just one small change that i noticed um but all the blackout dates do look the same it's just a little bit more expensive because this is for the rest of us that don't live in southern california <laughs> And um, so you'll want to go and look at those blockout dates and consider if that's going to work for you. The next level is the believe key and it has fewer blockout dates. This is actually one that looks very realistic to me because the dates that are blocked out are dates that I would not be going anyways. And so again, consult that calendar to see if that would work for you if you're considering one of these keys, these um, new forms of annual passes um, when you look forward to that. Um, And then the final, the highest is the dream key. And this is basically, it's not labeled as a no blockout date because I think they can't do that right now. Um, But when you go to the calendar, there's no blockout dates. The reason why though, is you'll notice as one of the benefits or you could look at it as a benefit or a limitation Um, as associated with each level of these keys is you will, um, each level has a different number of dates that you're allowed to have uh, park pass reservations for at any given time on that key, on that pass. And so that tells us when park pass reservations are here to stay. I don't think there's any getting around it. Um, And I think that at least for the foreseeable future, maybe down the road, it'll change again. But for now, we will always expect to have to make our park pass reservations, declare which park we intend to start in, get our spots. And that's how Disney is going to control how many people are coming to the parks. They'll be able to predict, well, because they'll know who's going where, when, and they'll be able to staff accordingly. But that is written into these new magic keys. And so um, each one has different levels of how many dates you can have on as a reservation at one time. And so that's gonna be important information to look at and consider. But the more I thought about this, and um, because at first I thought, oh, the highest, the highest two, you still only get six dates, which if you're going to plan a couple of trips that were three days each, or if you planned one trip that was five days and you only have one day left, it limits on how many you can plan for at a time. But the more I thought about this, um, and, and, and as you use the dates, you get new ones, so you can then get your next one um, after you use that one, the, the first date, and it kind of continually rolls. But um, the more I thought about it, as we get back to maximum capacity or wherever the capacity level is going to be that they're comfortable with, I don't think we're going to have as many troubles getting our park pass reservations. Right now, it's summer. Everyone's been missing Disneyland so so much and so long that they're desperate to get back. And it's limited capacity still. And so we're seeing that you do have to get these ahead of time well in advance or else they're just not available. But that's not always going to be the case. And so I think moving forward, it's actually quite realistic to have these limits of how many park holders or park uh, pass 
reservations you can have at once as an, uh, not annual pass holder, I almost said that, <laughs> as a magic key holder. And so, um, but, but look over the fine print. There is a lot in there. Um, I'm really excited about it. It's something we're gonna be considering um, for ourselves. Haven't made that decision yet quite, but it'll definitely be an option on the table, right? Mm -hmm. You wanna be a magic key holder? Yes. Of course you do. <laughs> You want to pay for your magic key? <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Okay, okay. Let's get back to let's get to our actual topic. Cruising is back. We're seeing a lot of cruise lines starting. Um, Disney Cruise Line is one of them. They just started their cruises this week, this past week, or the, the first ones went out. Currently, we're just cruising on the dream right now, um, but they will slowly be adding the other ships to their itineraries. But there's a lot we need to know. So let's go over that. Um, first of all, all guests will need to go to an additional website that you have not had to do before when you're going to cruise. You're going to go to, and they're going to send you this information. So first of all, before I get to the first of all, the very, very first of all, <laughs> is you really want to pay attention to all the emails and information that you get from Disney Cruise Line, as well as your travel agent, if you're using a travel agent. Read them all, look at them all, because if you miss information that is critical, you are going to miss your cruise. And we have already seen that happen this last week. People came not using the correct information. They were turned away. So you need to read all of the information that comes to you so you know what is required and you follow the proper steps. But if you do that, you can cruise. So here is, here is what we know right now. So first of all, guess we need to go to this website called inspirediagnostics.com. Like I said, you will get this information. You will have a link to do this. But where you, when you go there, you need to register every individual that is sailing, including your children. Everyone needs to have their own account with their own login. That is going to absolutely be required, at least for the time being. And you'll want to do this up to 33 days before you're sailing. I think that's the soonest you can do is 33 days. And I would, I would recommend doing it as early as you can. So at the 33 day mark or very close to it, don't wait until last minute, do it as early as you can. What next? Um, should also use the Disney Cruise Line app to complete the online registration for each person in your sailing group. And that's something we've already been doing. So yeah. it's not really new, but it's going to be even more important than in the past because there's going to be a lot more that you need to be prepared for. Um, now, do, using these sites, especially the um, inspirediagnostics.com, guests are going to have the option. You will choose whether or not you're willing to volunteer your vaccination status. And if you choose to volunteer that, that status, if you've received your vaccine, you will there, you will um, submit or enter a copy of your uh, vaccination card. This is optional. You don't have to do this if you're not comfortable or if you don't have a vaccine. Wait, what does that mean? It means that if you have been vaccinated and you are willing to share that with the Disney Cruise Line, okay. you will you will enter a send a copy to them, and um, that's how you'll do it. You do it through this before you even go. So that is an optional way to do it. But what's your next thing? Um, guests who do not show proof of vaccination will need to take a COVID test between five days and 24 hours prior to sailing. And then again, at the port, we'll need to take a rapid test. Both will be at the guest's expense. Right. So if you choose not to, you don't need to show your, your, your vaccination status. If you are not vaccinated or if you don't show your status, these will be required of you. You will need to take a COVID test prior to your arrival and then also at the, the port when you're leaving. Both will be at your expense, so it's gonna cost you a little bit, but also um, you'll need to, again, pay attention to the, the notice the emails that are coming to you because it's specific COVID tests are the ones that you need to take prior to that arrival at the port. And that's where we've seen people turned away. People took the wrong tests or people who thought that their kids didn't need to take the test because the parents um, were either had received the test or had been vaccinated. And so when they went through and they kind of got a green light, they assumed that meant they didn't need to also get their kids still tested for COVID. Everyone needs to either show their vaccination uh, record or get tested and with the correct test. So make sure you read all of that that comes out. It will be very clear. Now, in addition to this, all travel uh, for also travel insurance will be required for all cruisers who are 12 years or older that have chosen not to show proof of vaccination. 
um, the travel insurance will have to meet, um, that, that policy will have to meet minimum requirements set forth by Disney, and you will be able to receive those um, in there right now. Um, it may change, I'm not sure, but right now they have it listed at $10,000 per person for medical expenses, and also a minimum of $30,000 for emergency medical evacuation. It does not need to be purchased through Disney Cruise Line. They do offer it, so you can. You can go through another agency, just make sure it meets those minimum requirements. And remember, this is required for every, every guest that's 12 and older that does not show proof of vaccination. It's still optional to show that proof, but if you don't, you have to jump through these other hoops. It's gonna be required to get on that ship. Next. Um, even after checking in and indicating your vac vaccination status and or COVID test results, you will need to bring each person's test results or proof of vaccination and proof of insurance to the port to present at check-in. Right. And again, you know, if you have been vaccinated, it's not required. If you show that vaccination uh, proof, you do not need to have to in insurance. But I have always said, if you're cruising, get that travel insurance anyways. It won't be required to show if you have shown proof of vaccination. But for everybody else, it is required to show. So come bringing it. Even when you submit everything digitally and have, whether it's scanned in or whatever, you still need to bring it in person as well. So cover all the bases, make sure you're prepared to do that. Okay, be aware that cruisers are gonna be encouraged to check all of their bags, which we've already checked most of our bags usually, but they're encouraging you to check as much as possible to carry on as little as possible because they're going to be sanitizing all the bags as before they board. So um, if you, everything you can, go ahead and put in checked bags. Um, they are still going to have the, the, the cast members there collecting them, the crew members, and they will sanitize them and put them on the ship. You still need to make sure you have medications, your IDs, your all of those proofs of insurance and vaccination and COVID tests and all of that, because you'll need to show that at check-in. But um, keep that as limited as you can, just taking what you really do need for that first hour or two. It's again, as always, you carry it on and you keep it with you until you get to your, till you get access to your stateroom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Check-ins will be scheduled for a bit later than they usually begin. Instead of the first boarding groups being checked in around 11 a.m., they'll be likely closer to begin at 1 p.m. This also means that the crews will likely pull away from port later than usual to usually it's around 4 p.m., but they expect it to be closer than, to 7 p.m. And that's not a huge, huge, huge deal. Um, just be aware that everything's going to be backed up a little bit because there's going to be more um, careful process of the people that have gotten off the cruise before you're even boarding and then the clean, cleaning and then prepping everyone to get on. It's just going to take be a little bit longer. So expect that to begin later, to depart later, all of that, but it'll still be that day. But along with that, there are no longer going to be, or at least for the time being, are no longer going to be allowed early arrivals at the port. So in the past, if you say had a check-in time of 1.30, but you showed up at 12.15, a lot of times you could go in and check in early, maybe not quite at 12.15, but earlier than 1.30, a lot of times. They are not going to be doing that right now. You have to show up when you have indicated in your online check-in. So when you're checking in online, back back before up in the top, whatever I said, to get the Disney Cruise Line app and do your online registration and all that, you can do that online check-in and choose your arrival time. You can choose it based on your estimated flight times to come in, although hopefully you've arrived the day before. But whatever works for you, choose it and then stay to it. Arrive during that window. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, there will be masks required at the cruise port and anytime you're in public indoor spaces on the ship, the, ex the exception being when we, you are stationary and eating, drinking, such as meals or in the lounges, there will also be physical distancing. Yeah, so expect that. I think that's pretty expected. So um, if you're in your own stateroom, you don't need to wear, wear a mask. If you're outdoors, which is nice. So if you're up on deck, you don't need to wear a mask, although they will be having the um, physical distancing. Um, but just be in mind, keep in mind, if you're inside walking to dinner and all of that, or on at a show, you need to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. Okay. So also what's on board, the muster, excuse me, the muster drill is a little bit different than we've seen in the past. Um, instead of just going up to your assigned spot at the time and having a whole spiel there and then getting checked off and then being free to go, um, now we actually are going to be checking in using our apps. Um, so again, that Disney Cruise Line app is going to be absolutely 
vital these trips. You need to be able to have it. So make sure you have a smartphone that, that can access it. Um, but yeah, so you'll check in on the Disney Cruise Line app and then you will watch either on the app or in your stateroom TV, you will watch the little video. It's a very short video, the spiel of safety procedures and everything. So you can watch that in our wear. And then after that, you will um, then go to your reporting station. We still all need to know where our muster station is. It's absolutely critical because that's where you go if there's an emergency and they have to know you know where to go and how to get there. So after you watch the video and have checked in online and everything or on your app and everything, then you go to the muster spot. But all you have to do is tell them you're there. They'll check you off and you leave. So even though the same people are all going to be going to these spots, I don't know if they've spread them out to be a little bit more, um, not as many people or not, but even though we'll all be going to these spots, it's not going to be like we're getting there and then staying for half an hour or 15 minutes or whatever. It's not, we're not going to be congregating there. You get there, you get your name checked off the list and then you move on. And so there won't be as many people there and that's how they're keeping it safer that way. Okay. So that's all the pre cruise part of it. Now, once you're on the ship and you're enjoying your cruise, there are still a lot of things to be aware of. So we're going to start with dining. Rory, what do you want to start, say about dining? Um, there will still be two dining groups, the main and late seating but they will be staggering our seating times. When you check in at the port, you'll be given a time to report to the res restaurants for dinner. This will limit the con mm, yeah, the congestion. <laughs> the congestion, yeah. yeah. Um, at the restaurant entrances, you can prefer to refer, oh my gosh, you can refer to the app for your seating time. Yeah, so if you forget, that's okay. Look on your app, it'll remind you. And it's just gonna be staggering. I don't know if, if for those that have cruised before, a lot of times as dinner time approaches, you start to get a line outside the restaurant. And oh, yeah. that's what they're trying to eliminate. So that, and even as it's open, everybody's coming at the same time. So if they're staggering even by five or 10 minutes, then you're just not gonna get that congestion because they are pretty quick to seat you once you get in. And this just keeps it up to what they can keep um, what they can keep up with so that we don't have people gathering at the door um, just keeps it smoother and safer you will still have the same choices of times uh, seating times in general but the actual putting you at the table will be five or 10 15 minutes off yeah. it won't affect too much um, all right so another thing that is going to be changed about dining is there will only be one party per table so if you're in a group of two or three you will no longer at this time be seated with another family, which for some people is a pro and some people it's a con. Some people really love meeting another family or a couple and hearing about their trip and getting to know them throughout. I mean, we've made some friends <laughs> from some of the people that we've sat with before, but then some people are seeing this as a major pro because they are either introverts or shy or just want a quiet <laughs> meal together. And especially to, like <laughs> a nervous <laughs> chuckle next to me, maybe this person, even though you've made friends too, but yeah, it's but still, it's so awkward. yeah, it can be awkward. Mm -hmm. And so, so, um, so this can be seen as a pro or con, whether you see it as a pro or con does not matter. This is just how it is for now. Eventually it'll re probably return to where they had, you know, up to six or eight people in a group, but for now, it'll just be one party per table. Which is probably good news for you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, menus will be digital. You can access access them on the app. If you request it, you can get paper menus. Yeah, and they've always had the did the well not always since using the the navigator. Uh, you basically your Disney Cruise Line app. They've had the menus on there, and so it's nice. You can look it over throughout the day. You can look forward to dinner. You can pick what you want to. You think you might want to try, um, but now it's going to be expected that you're going to see that on the app. You're not going to automatically get a physical a menu, but if you prefer that you can ask and they will hand you one. Mm -hmm. So there you go. There will still be buffets on the ship, which is a very important part of cruising, <laughs> but instead of being where everyone just goes up and serves themselves, they will have cast members there to serve you. So you will just let them know what you want. They will dish it up on your That's plate for you. Awkward. It is a little awkward because you're like, oh no, can I have some more? And you look like a big pig or something. <laughs> I don't know, but it's, it, so it's a compromise. It's a compromise. So we can still have those buffets that people do love, yeah. but it does it in a way that makes people either more safe or, or at least feel safer. So. And probably feel a little healthier afterwards. Yeah, probably too. <laughs> okay. Let's move over to kids club. This is your dorma domain. Yeah. The Oceaneer club and Oceaneer lab will require online registration for each child. And we already 
did have to register, Yeah. but now it's going to be even more important. And you'll want to do it early because of the next thing, which is that kids will need to be registered for a session to attend. Previously, you just had to be registered to use the clubs. Now you, you actually go, go, uh, come and go and see, please. Yeah. You were able to do that freely. Um, but now you have to actually go ahead of time and decide, you know, to get yourself a spot in a session. They're going to, um, let me see here. I lost my place. Okay. Yeah. So you'll want to do that before you leave. And there is going to be a limit of one session per child each day. I did hear that those sessions. Yeah, yeah. I know. But I did hear that the sessions were like a couple hours, like two and a half hours or two hours. So it's not like you only get 30 minutes, but still, this is a big bummer for a lot of kids. Cause like Aurora, you loved it. You would stay there for hours and then you'd go back after lunch and stay there for more hours or I you know, still like, do that. Just yeah. not that. Those, you know, right. Those but when you were in the yeah. Oceaneer club and lab, lab. and yeah. I know a lot of kids do. And also there's the concern. Uh, so, so I can really see and sympathize with the parents that have younger kids that are looking at cruises during this time. Uh, that I think would be a huge setback for me. Um, I would be concerned about that for my family. Oh yeah. Unless you're a family that already, it's like they allow that, but it's not excessive like you already had a limit on how much time you wanted your kid to be in the clubs and so for them that would be fine but just be aware that you will need to register for the sessions and you will be limited to one session per excuse me per child per day what else do they need to know um sessions will be limited to 50 children at wait wait 15 yeah (laughs) big big difference (laughs) one Um, five 15 15 children at a time with one counselor present yeah so very very limited much smaller group and um so the exposure is going to be limited but be aware of that yeah also um nurseries are going to not be available so if you had kids that are between zero and three or kids that were not potty trained that were using nurseries that is not an option right now it's rough for the couples that really liked to use it for like date nights and things like that. But yeah. if you didn't, you know, that was an extra paid service. So I don't think as many that's people true, did use true. it, but it was used and it's not going to be available at least for the time being. Um, but good news for Aurora. <laughs> Edge and Vibe will be open and they will not be requiring registration for any visits. Yeah. So Aurora's group, as you get <laughs> older and keep in mind, these groups are the ones that can be vaccinated. Not all of them will be, I suppose, but they could be. And so many of them will, um, these groups don't have as strict a requirements as the younger kids. So you, we just have to make sure that you're set up for it, but that's fine. And then you can do like you normally do yeah. come and go and, and stay there the entire time. <laughs> yeah. And they may have, um, still a, a maximum capacity limit. And so we'll find that out and everything, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be quite as strict as, the, the younger kids, the Oceaneer. Yeah, not um, nearly. <laughs> yeah. Keep in mind, though, all kids, um, everyone, uh, they're going to be indoors. They need to be able to wear their masks the entire time that they're in the clubs. Make sure that your child is capable and willing to keep that on for their entire time because they will need to keep wearing that when they're in those clubs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and there will be no open houses. Yeah. And I don't know if this is a big deal for everybody, but um, for some people, especially if you're new to cruising, uh, maybe if you're new to cruising, this isn't the best time to go. But if you um, really liked the open house where the kids could show you what they were doing and what they liked, um, that's just not going to be available right now. They're really limiting how many people are in those spaces. All right. So let's move on over to Census Spa and Salon. Um, The good news is that it will be open, but the bad news, and I don't know if this is necessarily bad, but what we need to be aware of is that not all treatments are going to be available. So temporarily unavailable are the rejuvenation spa, couples massages, the juice bar, teeth whitening, facial and barbering services. They do. I know. They have a lot of things that I always wonder. I wonder how many people actually use this. I I would use it. (laughs) Well, I mean, yeah, but you had to pay for it too. And the prices are a lot higher on this cruise. <laughs> That's but, true. Okay. What else though? Um, They have a, uh, the chill spa, which is the youth spa will also be unavailable. Yeah. That's a bummer. So I didn't even know they had that. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. But for I'm the learning teens, a lot from this. <laughs> they do have a teen spots for 14 and up, I believe. And that is not going oh, to be. Oh, that's probably why I never knew. Cause you weren't I wasn't, yeah, old enough, old enough yet to use there's it. No use yeah. For me, no. In the future, we can look into that, but no, not, really not right now. <laughs> not really care. So. Okay, so one thing to note that the this is a super popular part of the spa is the rainforest, um, the rainforest room. It is going to be open, but it will be only available to one traveling party at a time, and they're limiting that group to up to 10 people. Um, the sessions are going to be for one hour and 45 minutes, and the cost is $174 per session. You need to make those reservations once you get on the ship. 
I feel like that's going to be booked. It probably will. This is an extremely popular activity to do on the ships. And so if you do have a group, and when it says by traveling party, I don't think that means just in your room. I'm going to assume that because when you book your trips, you can say I'm traveling with this family as well. And they kind of sync up your reservation together. So I think that if you have already indicated, so if you are traveling with other families or friends, sync yourselves up. So that way, A, you're seating together at dinner. And then also you have this option to do this. So then you could have a group of sisters or whatever friends that want to go and participate in that. You can do that as a group up to 10 people per session. You do need to make reservations. And so, yeah, but that's great. Cause a lot of people love that. Okay. Um, if you plan to take advantage of any spa services, arrive ready for your treatment. The locker rooms will not be available. Um, and keep in mind that masks are required during these treatments. Yeah. So your massages and stuff, which is why they're not doing facials and things like that, because they have to, you have to wear your, could you imagine, can't do the teeth whitening while you're wearing a mask. <laughs> so, okay. Now related, um, the gyms will be open. So if you're a type that likes to go and work out, run on the treadmill while you're watching the dolphins swim next to the ship, my husband's done that. Um, the equipment is going to be available, but they have spaced it out so it can be socially um, distanced or physical distancing. And so that's a good to go. Yep. Um, ping pong, shuffleboard, and the basketball courts are temporarily unavailable. The basketball court is being used for additional sunning areas. Yeah. Since they're spacing out those lounge chairs, they're going to use that spot. So don't expect to be able to go and get in a game, um, which is a little bit of a bummer. Those are some fun activities to do, especially on sea days and just walking around. Um, it's, it's kind of fun to do, but not right now. Okay, so pool and splash areas are going to be open, but there will be a capacity limit. I don't know what that limit will be, but be aware of that. They were already kind of small spaces, those pools. Yeah. So, but yeah. Um, meet and greets are on hold as we know, um, but characters will be around and can, and you'll be able to interact with them from a distance. I think this is a lot like what we're seeing in the parks. Where they're there, you can talk to them if they talk or wave at them and blow kisses and things like that. But it's going to be, you're going to not have, there are going to be some space between you, whether it's a rope or just a barrier of some sort, they'll, they'll limit the, the closeness you're able to get, but you'll, you'll be able to interact. You can take some selfies, turn around, take a picture with them. Um, it just won't be the way we're used to. Um, there will be the live Broadway style stage shows. However, they're just going to show one per sailing. And now these first sailings that are going out are only three and four nights anyways, but um, even the longer ones, I'm curious to see if that does get adjusted. Right now, they're just doing these one, um, one show per sailing. They're just going to show it on multiple nights. So instead of seeing a different show every night, they're going to have the same show play over and over. It'll be a first come, first serve because they're going to do some uh, social distancing in, in those theaters. Um, incidentally, you can see these also on your stateroom TV. So if you ever aren't feeling good or not sure if you're interested. It they, is, in, is it in the front or back? Front or back. Oh, it's in the back. In yeah, I, okay, I can't remember which part, but there's often motion sickness is um, uh, a lot. Yeah, yeah, more. yeah. Motion yeah. sickness tends to be felt more back there uh, sometimes um, when it's going. But anyways, uh, yeah, so a lot of times there have been times where we haven't felt up to doing our going to the show, whether we're tired or whatever. So we have just um, watched it from the stateroom. So that's an option too. So if you're not comfortable going in or if there's just not room, just watch it from your stateroom. But yeah, that's, that's um, definitely going on. You got the next one though. Um, this is good news and bad news. Fireworks will be taking place two nights of the cruise. Cruisers will be assigned which night they can view. If you happen to have a veranda or ocean view room from the um, correct side of the ship, you'll be lucky to see it both nights, but they switch up each, um, which side they do it on. So there will be no way of no, uh, way to, to know if you're on the right side or not yeah. until it happens. They started, they noticed that whenever they would have the, cause because they've always done the, the fireworks at sea, but they noticed that the, that side of the ship always, the verandas would book up super fast because people would want to, they could just watch their personal fireworks from their room, right? Yeah. And that's not a bad thing. Of course, you can do that. Go for it. But what because those booked up so fast, they started switching up which side they would do the, the, the fireworks from. So that way you couldn't know. And it was a, you just don't know when mm -hmm. you just try one side and see if that happens to be it. And if it's not, oh, well, but, yeah. um, but that also means though, you won't know until the fireworks are actually happening. So you don't want to wait into your room until the fireworks start to find out. Yeah. And maybe they, maybe someone on uh, in like, like the cast members, maybe some of them know, and they're able to tell you, you can ask, I don't know, but anyways, 
you'll be assigned a night to watch the fireworks. They will be out, um, especially these first ones, because these are all down in the Bahamas and, and the next ones will be in the Caribbean. And so you will be able to have fireworks at sea. Uh, just know that it is going to be an assigned night that you have to show up for. It's not just with, pick which one you want to go to or even go to both. All righty. Oh, the next one's me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, where are we? Okay. But along with us, even though we are getting the fireworks, there are no deck parties. So even though we will have the fireworks, we will not have the Pirates in the Caribbean deck party. We will not have the sail a wave party. That's my favorite one. And like the Frozens, any of those deck parties. Oh, bless you. No more. Okay. This one's yours. Oh, this is a big bummer. Uh, no fish extenders. Yeah, that's that's probably like our bummerest one. Bummerest. Is that a word? We made up a word. It's the bum most the bummer. Yeah, we're bummed about the fish extender. I mean, it's not a it's not a do or die for us. We can we can cruise without fish extender, but fish extender sure is a fun addition to our cruises. So yeah. we're bummed about that. That's okay. <sighs> Moving on. Hopefully by the time our cruise goes, because it's a few months down the road still, hopefully fish extenders are back, if if nothing else. <laughs> okay, let's go to ports of call. Um, the initial sailings, like I said, these first ones here in August are only to the Bahamas. They actually are only going to Disney's Castaway Key. They aren't even stopping anywhere else. However, starting in September, they are adding NASA to the itinerary. So that will be an option. Um, as things, you know, as we start getting other cruise ships going, we will see other itineraries as well. But right now it's very limited. Um, to debark at port, you will need to join a virtual queue using the DCL app. You'll receive a notification when it's your turn to debark. You'll also receive a debarkation, debarkation ticket on the app. Stop laughing at I'm me. I'm just smiling. <laughs> yeah, so again, with the apps, you need to use the app and um, you'll be able to get that set up. But I think it's gonna be a lot like, you know, it's just a virtual get in line. You get, get on there and get in line. Um, and then they'll, they'll, that'll limit how many people are showing up at the door and you don't get the big, again, the big congestion to go out. As you debark, you will need to show, and you've always had to do some of this, but now you need to show that debarkation ticket that you will receive from the app, as well as your key to the world, which is your room key. And then anyone that's 18 and older needs to show their government issued ID. So make sure you take that with you when you leave. Um, yes. And when it's just, not as busy, the virtual queue will not be required. Yeah, so I think this is really just those, that first rush in the morning, people were rushing off to go to their excursions or to at Castaway Key that wanna go get their lounge chairs. Um, so if you are not in a rush to get off the ship, you might be able to skip that step. Um, so just be aware, check the app just in case, but it might not be as much of an issue if you wait an hour or so after everyone else is getting off. Finally, last thing, the they have totally continued their relaxed cancellation policy. If you have booked your cruise already for this fall, if you booked by July 31st of this year and you are sailing by December 31st of this year, you are able to move your cruise to a different cruise date up to 15 days before your, tra your travel date is before you're supposed to depart. And this is totally not normal. I mean, it has been during COVID, but of course during COVID we haven't been cruising yet, period. But normally before COVID, by then you're locked in. And if you try to move it, you lose it. You're just, you're out your money, you're everything, even unless you had insurance. And so this is totally a very relaxed and, um, a complimentary thing that they're doing, of course, because they want to make sure anyone that starts is just feeling nervous, they've waited and they're just not sure up to two weeks or 15 days before your travel, you can change to a later sailing without a penalty. So that is an option. In addition, if you're within that 14 days of sailing and you start to have COVID symptoms, you might be able to get a full refund. Now there is a lot of fine print in all of this. And so um, between that, as well as the scenario of the 15 days prior being able to move, there's a lot of fine print. So definitely consult your travel agent or the Disney Cruise Line um, website to find, get the fine details on all of that. But it's nice. They're trying to make it as safe as possible for everyone. There is a lot of controversy on this. A lot of people, some people are going to just not be happy with the requirements, the restrictions. Um, some people are put at ease with them. You know, some people feel like it's not strict enough. So, I mean, you can't satisfy everyone, um, but they're doing their best to try to make it as safe and comfortable for everyone. If we had known that these were going to be the requirements when we were cruising this fall, we might have actually kept our cruise. We canceled based on, and we knew that it was based on uh, the requirements for months ago and that it could change by now. 
Um, but the stricter sounding requirements that they were giving when we heard, like when the UK started doing their staycations at the beginning of summer, and it was just a lot lim more limited and we didn't feel comfortable with that. And we decided to change. I think now that we've changed, I'm glad Yeah, we're looking forward to our new cruise as well. And some of these may be a lot lifted you know, it might not be as strict as it is now. It might be more relaxed by the time we go too. I'm kind of hoping, especially about that fish extender, <laughs> but um, some of these things I'm actually excited about. I would love to see the mustard roll stay this way. I think that's mm -hmm. going to be great. I'm looking forward to that. Um, and so we'll see how, how much of this um, stays, but I would expect that anyone cruising by this, the end of this year, anyone cruising in 2021, you can expect these or plan for these um, limitations. And if you're willing to do it, go have fun. I think that the people, what we're hearing for those that have been able to go back to sailing is it is wonderful. They are so happy to be back. It's just one, it's just as great. It's just a little different than what we've seen in the past and go in with that understanding that just like when we're going to the parks, it's just a little different, but it's still magical and a lot of fun and you can have a great time. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's the news for now. And thanks for joining us and have a great week. See you.